Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be working on our next stitch dictionary swatch and we will be working up the crochet basket weave stitch. It's a lot simpler than it looks so don't let it intimidate you. Let's go ahead and get started. I'll be using an NP 10 millimeter crochet hook and I'll be using some Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick. This colorway is called Wheat. Any number six bulky weight yarn will work, but I prefer the Woolies Thick and Quick to anything else, and it's what I'm using for all of my Stitch Dictionary swatches. So go ahead and start with a slip knot. Insert your hook in the loop and tighten down the knot. And we're going to start with a foundation chain. So remember, chain stitch is just yarn over and pull through. For this uh, stitch, all you're going to need to know is chain stitch and then how to double crochet and we're going to be working some front and back post double crochets with this uh, stitch. So go ahead and chain any multiple of four for your foundation chain. I'm going to be chaining 28. So a nice even multiple here. If you do need any help with uh, individual stitch tutorials, I am going to be moving a little bit quickly here. Uh, so make sure that you're very familiar with double crochet, including front and back post double crochet. If you need any help with either of those, go ahead and head to my crochet beginner series on my main channel page. So here we have our foundation chain, working our last few here. Alrighty, so here is 28, we're all ready to go. And row one is really easy, in the third stitch from our hook. So skip the first three chains and then in the fourth one, work a double crochet. So yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop. We have three loops, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. So that's our double crochet in the fourth chain from our hook. We can see how that should be looking. And then from here on for all of row one, we're just gonna double crochet in each stitch all the way across. So here we have a double crochet in each stitch across. So we should have 25 double crochets here if you're following the same multiple as I am, but again, you can do any multiple of four for that foundation chain. So go ahead and chain up three, and we're gonna turn our work, and here's when things start to get interesting and we start to uh, work on the actual basket weave. So we're going to skip this first stitch here, go ahead and skip it all together, and look at the second uh, double crochet in the row. So basically we're gonna be working in sets of four all the way down after we skip that first stitch. So visualize this in sets of four, skip the first stitch. And in the second stitch, we're going to do a front post double crochet. So what that looks like is we're going to actually be working around the post of the stitch, not into the top of the stitch. So if we look at this double crochet here, we're going to work a front post double crochet, working around the uh, post or the pillar of that double crochet stitch. And then complete your double crochet as usual. So there's our first front post double crochet and it creates kind of like a raised ribbing effect. So we're going to work a front post double crochet in each of the next three stitches. So again sets of four and if you need a little refresher on how I'm doing this I'm going slowly here so you can see exactly what I'm doing but again refer back to that crochet beginner series. I have individual video tutorials on the front and back post double crochet. And I'll link those below in the description box as well. So here's our third front post double crochet. There are three and four. Make sure that you're not skipping any stitches here. I know with front and back post it gets a little confusing because we're not used to looking at the stitch in this method. But uh, just be very careful and go slowly that you're not skipping any stitches. So here we have the first four. Now in the next four stitches, we're going to back post double crochet. So very similar, we're just gonna come in through the back after we yarn over and work up and around. And you can see what it looks like from the front and then from the back up and around the post of that double crochet. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Make sure your tension is loose here as well. Not any looser than normal, but just make sure you're not too tense, you're relaxed. Um, and just taking this slowly. So back post double crochet. It is raised but in the opposite direction so it's raised kind of on the back side and we'll see that when we turn this over for the next row. But we're going to back post double crochet in each of those four stitches so there's the second 
the third. And one more to make four. And with these back post double crochet clusters of four, you're going to see that it pushes the top of the double crochets in row one forward and it will create kind of what looks like a little horizontal line from pushing those stitches forward. And that's what's going to give you the cross hatching effect and basket weave uh, that is so distinct. So we've done the first two clusters and we're just going to repeat that all the way across. So four front post and then four back post and all the way across. You may end on front post, you may end on back post, it just depends on what your multiple of four was to begin with. But either way we're going to finish the row the same and I'm going to guide you through how to move forward from this very simply and easily no matter what your multiple was. So this could be a big giant king size afghan or this could be a tiny little pot holder or coaster and it's going to be the same method. So here we've done our next cluster of four front post double crochets. And then here's what it looks like when we've carried that all the way across. So when we get here to the end, I ended on a cluster of back post double crochets. And then we still have this turning chain spot left open. So what we're going to do is we're just going to double crochet, a regular double crochet, right into that chain three space. And that's going to kind of anchor things and make everything nice and linear with straight sides. So there is what row two should be looking like. Much different from row one, we're already starting to see kind of a basket weave pattern. We're gonna chain up three and turn. Now with basket weave, we're going to do what I'm gonna call matching rows. So we've done one row uh, of the basket weave pattern, and now for the second row of the basket weave pattern, which is actually row three, we're going to match those rows. So even though this was back post double crochet and we can know that by that line that's on the front, we're gonna ignore what we just did. We're just going to look at this as it is in front of us after we've turned our work, and these look like front post double crochets. So because they look like front post double crochets, we're going to work front post double crochets. So work a front post double crochet over each of these stitches. We want to match what is in the row below and carry on with what is in front of us. So no matter what your multiple of four was to begin with, no matter how big or small your project is, you are going to just follow the lead of the row below to match your second row of basket weave stitches. So we can see here that this is further uh, creating more ribbing and raising uh, those stitches even more. So these look like back post stitches, so we're going to follow that lead and match to the row below and work four back post double crochets. So we're going to be working in sets of two matching rows. So you'll do, we have our first row of basket weave stitches, which is the row below the one I'm working now, and then we have a row that matches. Now, after we complete this row, we're going to change direction, and you'll see what I mean by that in just a moment. But when I say a matching row, that means follow the lead of what is in the row below and follow uh, what those clusters look like. So when you're looking at it after you've turned your work, do exactly what's in the row below. And if you want to make a swatch exactly the same size as mine and just follow my counts, I will have the written pattern linked below in the description box for you um, so that you can get the hang of how this works. But it's easier for me to explain it and visualize it as sets of matching rows. So here I've come up to some front post double crochets. So that's what I'm going to work. I'm going to match the row. And once we get to the end of this row, our second row of matching, we can see that we have followed the lead of the row below and so we have consistent rows of front and back post double crochets. Everything matches, nothing has changed direction. Remember to double crochet in that turning chain. We're gonna do that at the end of every single row from here on out. Double crochet into the turning chain and then we're gonna chain three and turn. Now since we've done two rows that match and we know that by looking at this swatch and seeing that there is no real basket weave pattern happening yet, we know that it's time to change direction. And by change direction, I mean we're going to do just the opposite of what we see. So these look like front post stitches, don't they? Now here, since we did two rows that match, it's time to change direction. So what we're going to do is do exactly the opposite of what we see in front of us. So when we're changing direction, 
every other row, do the opposite of what you see. I see front post, so I'm going to do back post. So every other row will change the direction. So I'm going to work back post stitches everywhere I see a front post stitch and front post stitches everywhere I see a back post stitch on the changing direction rows. I hope that this method of explaining the basket weave stitch to you guys helps you be able to visualize what kind of stitch you need to put where and follow your own lead instead of stressing about reading a written pattern with lots of numbers and multiples that can get really overwhelming and confusing. So here we can see now that I've changed direction and these stitches on top of the front post look different. I have that row pushing forward, that horizontal line from the back post stitches and that's exactly what we want to see. Now I've come upon this cluster of back post stitches so I'm going to front post double crochet in the next four stitches. And if you've done this change of direction row correctly, as we work along, and especially when we get to the end, we will be able to see a distinct difference between our matching rows and our change direction row. So those two rows below which match should look very different from this row that we're working right now. And you can already see that taking shape. We can already see um, how it's looking much different. It's really starting to create the basket weave shape. So go ahead and continue this all the way across. And now we can see what this should be looking like. So our change direction row is really changing direction. Don't forget that double crochet in the turning chain at the end of the row. And now since we've changed direction, whenever we change direction, we're going to repeat or match the next row to what is below. So you can see here these horizontal lines over those clusters of front post double crochets and everything should be looking just like a basket weave pattern. So chain three and turn. Now since we've just done a change direction row, it's time to do a matching row. So what that means is we're going to look at the row just below and match whatever we see. So don't look down here, look at that row you just finished. So here, since I'm seeing that horizontal line, I know that that's back post, and so I'm gonna work back post because I'm matching what I see. Another way to think about this is that on the front side of your work, you are doing change direction rows, and on the back side of your work, you're doing matching rows. But as we work along, it's a little harder to keep track of that, whether you're on the front side or the back side of things. At least it is for me. If that helps you at all, feel free to uh, think of it that way, when to change direction and when to match. But also, if you do uh, mess this up and you do an extra matching row or you change direction too soon or too late, you will know it because things will not be linear. You won't have nice, even uh, squares of basket weave. It will throw things off and you'll really be able to tell. So just make sure you're paying attention um, and changing direction and matching when you need to. So again, here, working the next cluster, I am doing matching rows still. So I see front post and I'm going to work front post. So go ahead and continue this all the way along the row, just matching what you see below. And since we've done a matching row this time, when we turn our work, we're going to be doing, guess what? A change direction row. I know that when I first started using these words at the beginning of the video, you're probably like, what is this crazy lady talking about? But look at this, you guys. It looks like a basket weave. And it's pretty simple once you get the hang of it. I know that maybe sitting here watching me do it, it looks overwhelming, but once you get the hook in your hand and you follow along, it really is a lot easier than you would have ever thought. So here we've finished our matching row. So we now have two matching rows and two matching rows with a change direction. So we've double crocheted in that turning chain at the end of the row. We're chaining up three and turning our work. And now it's back to the beginning and we're going to change direction. So since what we see here is back post, we're going to do just the opposite and we're going to front post. And you're just going to keep continuing in this manner, doing a change direction row and a matching row, change direction row and a matching row until you have the length that you want. And like I said before, if you do make any mistakes, it's totally okay and totally fixable. Um, you can just undo that one row 
and then uh, redo it because you're going to know pretty immediately uh, whether or not you are consistently creating the basket weave stitch nice and evenly. So here I've done my front post double crochets over what look like back post and then coming up to the next cluster these look like front posts so I'm going to work back post double crochets. Once again if you want to follow the written pattern and make a swatch just like mine it would probably be about the perfect size for a pillow or you can use them obviously um, toward your stitch dictionary throw that I'll be putting together from all of the stitch dictionary uh, videos on my channel. I do have a playlist for that over on my main channel page as well where we're doing lots of different types of stitches and working up swatches that will eventually be sewn together to make a sampler style afghan. Lots of fun and we're learning a lot along the way so make sure to check that out or just subscribe to my channel and you'll be notified every time I post a new video, Stitch Dictionary or not. And that little subscribe button is nice and easy to locate just below this video. So keep stitching along and go ahead and repeat these rows, change direction, and matching until you have the length that you want. So I'm just going to work up my swatch and make it a perfect square. And here we are. Super easy. I just repeated these rows, eyeballed it, um, and created a nice square. Obviously this still needs to be blocked. It's a little bit wobbly, um, but it's really, really easy and mindless once you get the hang of it. To know if your swatch is a perfect square also, you can just fold the corner down as you're going, and if it makes a perfect triangle and matches, then you've got a square. Or of course you can measure it. And I also just single crocheted around the edge, around the perimeter, just to kind of even things out and make it nice and linear. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on the crochet basket weave stitch. Thanks so much for watching.